This video is going to cover the basics of the workflow editor in Active Demand. The workflow editor shows up in many places within Active Demand, whether it is a custom workflow for handling specific signals that you're trying to take action on, like I'm going to do here today, or it's in places like the autoresponders within, uh, within Active Demand. Every form has an autoresponder and the autoresponder has a workflow. Other places you'll see the workflow editor are in campaigns, like a nurture campaign is one very long workflow, or multi-step campaigns. Again, you'll have multiple workflows. Each workflow is a, start, is a step and executes on some logic. So the triggers for workflows are what are known as the starting step of a workflow. So there's lots of different elements that, uh, uh, starting steps that exist, and here's a subset of them. Uh, so, well, for example, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you a form submit as the starting step. So, in places like an autoresponder, the, it is a form of submit and it's already created. So, you will not be have to go and create this workflow for a form submit. It will automatically be created. So, what you're seeing here on the left is the uh, canvas where the uh, workflow widgets are going to be uh, moved around and connected, etc. So this starting step, the one with the little star here, is a form submit. So I'll click on this uh, widget, and that's the same with any widget in this, this uh, editor, is that if you click in the middle, it will slide out the properties of that widget. So this starting step needs a form, and we'll use, for example, the contact us form. So it listed all of the forms that are currently configured for this account, um, and that's that could be forms that I've exported to the website or forms in some of the custom lot landing pages, what have you. So really the starting step, this will be triggered whenever this form is submitted. So clicking on the canvas here, there's uh, on the left, like I said, is uh, the canvas where we're going to put all of our, our workflow widgets. On the right, we have two types of widgets. One, decisions, uh, and these are really, as it sounds, is some type of decision based on a signal. So something's happened, we analyze what's happened, and then proceed through the workflow. And the next piece is actions. This is what you're going to do, take action on uh, uh, whenever this, this step is, is, is created. So for example, if I take a, um, a member of a list, and really what I'm going to say is if this person um, uh, who has submitted this form is a member of a specific list, then we will proceed. So to connect the two, I drag, um, I click right on the uh, form submit uh, widget uh, where it comes out and I connect it to the member of list. And as you see here, the, the, you can click right on the, um, uh, the wire and it's the case some wires have, have uh, true and false like a decision wire and this is true, which will always be the case for a form submit. So you don't have to edit it. And then if I click on my is a member of a list, and I'll just go select one of my uh, lists here. And if they're a member of this list, we're going to do something. So there's lots of other things I can check uh, uh, on, the, on the workflow. Uh, for example, I could have checked is have they, have they visited a specific web page, right? And uh, if it's a case that, uh, um, you know, maybe I wanted to say this person, if he submitted a form, submit, uh, uh, a specific form, and is a member of a list, that, and uh, he visited a very specific uh, web page, then uh, it's a case that we will proceed. So the other type of decision is just a, a query, and this uses the query engine, and if you not familiar with the query engine, there are other videos that talk about it. But really, this is where you can drill down to any type of contact uh, uh, activity and query uh, to, to see if this, this specific thing has been true. So, uh, and if you notice here too, there's this workflow and global. Sometimes you're doing checks on something that's happened upstream from the decision. So in this case, maybe you sent an email or did some other type of thing. You want to know, is the thing you're checking for upstream in the workflow, or is it something that's happened at some point in time and we've captured it? So workflow scope means it's happened before this decision, and global scope means it's happened at any time. 
So for example, if I was using the, um, the web page visit, uh, really, I'd be looking at, did they visit this web page here in this workflow? But I could go check to see if he's ever visited a, a specific web page. So is a member of a list. So that's uh, the basics of a decision. The next piece are the actions. So I want to do something uh, with this, this specific uh, uh, contact, the person who submitted this form, based on the decision. So there's, I'm going to, typically we're sending emails. And uh, there's three types of email objects. Uh, there's the email uh, sales, email prospect, and email marketer. So uh, the reason there's three is typically you do not want to send, make a mistake of sending a specific type of email to a prospect. And in this case, the prospect is the person who submitted the form. So if it's a case that you do want to send some note to the prospect uh, and they're a member of the list, and maybe I want to say, uh, if they're not a member of the list, I want to try to get them into the list. So I'll say, email this prospect some type of an email. I may as well want to have, uh, um, uh, may have wanted to send something to, uh, to sales, right? If it's a case that uh, maybe I'll just say if it's true um, that they are a member of the list, I'll just notify, I should say, the marketer that something's happened. So what's the difference between sales and marketing? Uh, that's a good question. Um, in this case, with regards to active demand, if you send it to sales, it generates a sales notification. And sales notifications are typically tracked as uh, leads, lead notifications, etc. Uh, and there is a specific set of people that can be added to a sales list. So when you create a sales widget, the only lists that will show up within, uh, um, if you uh, select the uh, email list here, the only list that will show up in this dropdown are lists that are flagged as salespeople. So again, it's a lot of things in active demand try to help you uh, uh, or keep you from making mistakes. So and hence, if uh, we have a separate channel for sales, a separate channel for marketers, and a separate channel for the prospects. And uh, once you get into any of these email widgets, really it's, uh, uh, it's about building an email. And if you click here, it will open the email builder. And the email builder, there's another video that talks about the details of the using the email builder, but I'll just give you a quick example. When you click this button, it gives you the option to create a template uh, email from scratch, take something out of your uh, saved library, or there's a bunch of canned responses or example emails that, uh, that we have for you. And they're uh, reusable emails, you can edit them, use them how, the, how you like, etc. If I, for example, check this one, which is the form submit prospect, I have the option of loading the template, which I get to edit it and customize it for myself, or link it. And if I link to the template, if there's ever improvements on this specific email, all emails in the entire system will be uh, will be updated. So uh, be careful of what you choose here. Um, it's a case that uh, ideally linking to your own emails is the best choice because then uh, it's a case that you can change once and it uh, and it will fix or update all of your emails across the system. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of that. So the emails that are shown for uh, when you click on the new email uh, for email prospect are just for um, uh, emailing the prospects. There's a different set of templates if you click on the email sales and there's a different set of templates that are available for email marketer. So that's pretty much uh, uh, the, uh, the basics of using the workflow editor. A couple of other things is just basics of uh, the environment. You can zoom in, zoom out, multi-select elements, drag them around, uh, etc. And if you want to delete um, wires, press the delete wire uh, button, click on the wire, delete the, delete the wire. Another element in the editor is the ability to stack actions. So for example, if I wanted to um, email the prospect, email sales, and email the marketer, I could put them all into uh, one um, object. 
Um, unfortunately, you can't take an existing object and drop, drop it on top, but again, it is uh, uh, very simple to just stack them into a, a, a single step. That concludes today's video on Workflow Editor Basics.